Yeah, so in the last class uh, we were uh, talking about uh, the characteristics of the film and we saw this uh, curve which is known as the film characteristics curve. And then we saw that we can derive uh, some properties uh, from this curve like the film gradient and the film latitude and in today's class we are going to see uh, how this uh, film properties uh, will uh, control the quality of the image. Uh, but before that uh, let us talk about one more uh, property of the film uh, which is about uh, the speed of the film. Okay. And while discussing about this we will also learn about uh, the types of films. As I said before uh, different uh, films would have their uh, different characteristics curve which is provided by the manufacturer. So, these curves uh, sometime will look like S shaped and sometime they might also look like a J shaped curve. Okay. So, this one we have seen which is S shaped, but you may also have uh, curves which will look like this. which is like J shaped okay. and in this J type curves uh, you have uh, three varieties 1, 2 and 3 types okay, depending on uh, the different properties of the films and the S shaped uh, curve you have type 4 film. Okay. So, this axis is uh, exposure which uh, is the combination of uh, intensity and the exposure time. Okay. So, since time is involved here uh, you would also be able to uh, derive the speed of the film. For example, if I have two films like this P and Q. Okay. So, here you could see for a particular density D the exposure time which is needed for Q is higher compared to that needed for P. Okay. So, this itself uh, tells you that uh, film P is faster compared to film Q. Okay. So, that means the film speed uh, for film P is higher than the speed for film Q. Okay. So, like this on a competitive basis you would be able to get a number uh, which will provide you the speed of a film uh, for a particular film, but it has to be on a competitive basis. Okay. Let us say <coughs> uh, that uh, for a particular uh, density let us provide a number for that. Let us say we want a density 2 and for that uh, the exposure needed for the slower film uh, which is Q, let us say that is uh, 2.5 and for the faster film it is 1.9. Okay. So, in order to uh, get a number uh, for the speed of the film what is done? First you assign an arbitrary number uh, to the slower film. So, that the number for example, can be uh, let us say like 100 okay, which can be easily remembered and which can be easily used to calculate uh, the film speed comparatively for the other films. Okay. So, first you assign an uh, arbitrary number to the slower film 
for its speed and let us say it is 100. Okay. Then you uh, calculate the difference in this uh, exposure. So, in this case uh, the difference is is 0.6 and take the anti log of that. Since it is on a logarithmic scale. So, anti log of uh, 0 0.6 is 4. Okay. So, this tells you that uh, film P is 4 times uh, faster compared to film Q. And since we have already provided a speed of 100 to film Q to the slower film, the speed of the faster film will be 400. Okay. So, this is how the film speed is assigned to a particular film on a comparative basis. Okay, similarly, you might have another film uh, over here and for that also you can see what is the exposure and take the difference between that exposure and the exposure for the slowest film. Take the anti log of that and then you can calculate uh, the speed for that particular film also. Okay. So, this is how uh, the film speed uh, is decided. And this also tells you that uh, you know for a given kind of film uh, whether you need uh, uh, higher exposure or lower exposure time. So, for uh, radiography you need uh, a high gradient so in a good quality radiograph you need uh, a high gradient, a high G value. D should be in the range of uh, 0 0.25 to 2, a higher D is again good for a good quality image. A minimum contrast of uh, 0.2 is uh, needed. Although human eye can uh, identify a contrast below 0 0.2, but for a good quality image which can be easily seen uh, a contrast of 0 0.2 is desirable. And there is one more property, uh, one more uh, feature that you see on the film uh, which uh, controls or which uh, you know uh, influences the quality of the image uh, is what is known as uh, graininess. So, as I told you this radiographic film is basically made of uh, silver halide uh, particles. These particles are very small that you cannot see them by naked eye. If, uh, if you want to see them, you have to uh, see them in an electron microscope. But sometimes these particles tend to cluster together. So, uh, several uh, particles will form a clump, a cluster and when they do so, they will appear as uh, some kind of white patches here and there, which will uh, affect the contrast of the image or which will affect the uh, quality of the image adversely. Okay. So, a high graininess uh, in an image is uh, not good for the quality of the quality of the image. So, for a good quality image uh, you should have a fine graininess that means you will not see much of these big clusters on the image. Okay. So, if on the other hand if you have a coarse uh, kind of graininess uh, that tells you uh, the quality of the image is not so good because this uh, graininess will tend to blur the image. So, a table is given uh, by ASTM for different types of film. And looking at this table, uh, you would be able to see uh, what kind of film will give you what uh, 
film characteristics with uh, regard to the quality of the image. So, this is a table of uh, film type film speed gradient and graininess. So, for type 1 film the speed is low, gradient is very high. and the graininess is very fine. Okay, so, although the speed is low, the uh, gradient is very high, the uh, graininess is also very fine. So, that tells you that for a film uh, which is type 1, the quality of the image will be good. Okay. For film type 2, the speed is medium. gradient is high and the graininess is fine. For type 3, the speed is high gradient is medium and graininess is coarse. For type 4, uh, you have two types, one is a very high speed which is uh, indicated as B type, small b in this case and uh, medium speed which is indicated as uh, D within the type 4 itself. So, for this uh, B type uh, within type 4, the gradient is uh, very high and for the medium, the gradient is also medium and the graininess for both of them is medium. Okay, so, you can see there is a, a trade off uh, between the speed of the film and the quality of the contrast you get. Okay. So, it depends on you know what exactly you want, uh, uh, whether you want, uh, whether you can afford to have uh, longer exposure time or you can compromise a bit up on the quality, but you want to have a lower exposure time. Okay. So, depending on, on that uh, you could select uh, these film types. So, this particular table will guide you uh, selecting a particular type of film uh, for the particular quality of image uh, which is needed. Next we are going to talk about uh, the intensifying screens. If you remember I told you before that the efficiency of the image formation or the quality of the image uh, can be improved by using these intensifying screens. So, the objective of uh, using an intensifying screen is to first uh, filter out scattered uh, radiation. because within the sample and within the sample holder and the exposure chamber there will be lot of uh, scattering happening and this scattered radiation intensity is much lower compared to the main uh, uh, radiation 
and that is why uh, if uh, scattered intensity is present in the beam which is passing through the sample and falling on the film, it will uh, tend to haze the image and uh, affect the image quality adversely. Okay? So, that is why if you want to uh, improve the quality of the image, uh, this uh, scattered radiation has to be filtered out. And there are different sources for this uh, scattered radiation. Uh, some of them come from within the sample and some can come from around the sample. Okay? Uh, for example, uh, you know if you have uh, a sample like this. let us say some geometry like this. So, this uh, backscattering can happen uh, from within the sample from different uh, regions of the sample like this. So, the main radiation is coming like this. this is the sample and you can have this uh, exposure ch chambers. So, you have this uh, side wall or this floor over here. Okay. So, the first source of the scattered radiation is from within the sample itself uh, which will come from different portions of the sample and some of these uh, radiations, some of these backscattered radiation can, can come from the uh, surrounding of the sample like for example, this wall or from this floor. So, these radiations can go to these walls and get scattered from the floor also they can get, get scattered and if there is uh, some hole or something inside the sample from there also they can get scattered. Okay. And uh, in the third case uh, you can get scattering from this uh, floor also which is opposite to the sample like this. Okay. So, there are uh, different sources of uh, this backscattered uh, radiations and as I told these scattered radiations are not good for the quality of the image and you need to filter them out. Okay. So, you need to use something uh, over this film. Uh, before the film is exposed to the radiation, you need to use something over the film which can absorb all these low intensity radiations. Okay. So, lead is a material uh, which is generally used because lead can easily interact with x-rays and absorb them particularly in the uh, low intensity ones. So, these kind of screens uh, are the metal screens. and most commonly used metal is lead. Okay. So, this uh, uh, low intensity uh, uh, radiations uh, when they enter this uh, layer of lead, they will uh, knock out electrons uh, from the atoms of lead and that is how they will uh, get absorbed. Okay. So, that is how they will get filtered and uh, lead can easily absorb uh, the scattered radiation because uh, the work function or the energy needed for knocking out an electron uh, from lead is only 88 uh, kilo electron volt. On the top of the film, there has to be a very thin layer of uh, this intensifying screen. So, if lead is used uh, a very thin layer which is around 0.13 mm 
is enough to uh, filter out all these uh, scattered radiations which are not desirable. And the second objective of uh, using an intensifying screen is to uh, improve the image quality. And as I told this uh, main radiation when it enters uh, the lead screen it will knock out electrons and these electrons will now go and fall on the film and they will additionally expose the film by providing these uh, electrons. So, these electrons will go and interact with the uh, silver uh, bromide uh, particles which are there in the film and that is how they will uh, enhance the quality of the image. Okay. So, this is the second objective. So, if you use uh, an intensifying screen you can not only improve the image quality because you are providing some extra source uh, which can interact uh, with the silver ions and, and at the same time you can also uh, filter out uh, the scattered radiation which is not desirable for forming the image. So, lead is used uh, very commonly and if you have uh, high intensity uh, x-rays So, lead can be used uh, from anything between this energy range uh, 100 uh, kilo electron volt to 2 mega electron volt extra energy. And for uh, higher energy x-rays uh, other metals can also be used. like uh, copper, tantalum, tungsten all these metals can also be used for high, higher energy x-rays. Okay. So, this is about uh, metal screens, but uh, there are other types of uh, screens also uh, which can be used for example, uh, these fluorescent salt screens which are uh, generally used in medical x-ray radiography. So, these screens will uh, essentially have this uh, fluorescent material or this phosphor kind of material which emits light when they uh, interact with x-rays. And uh, since these X-ray films are more sensitive to visible light uh, compared to X-ray radiation, these uh, photons of visible lights uh, can improve the quality of the image. Okay. So, that is the objective here to convert the X-ray photons into visible light photons. Since the film itself is more sensitive to visible light photons. Okay, so, photographic film is more sensitive uh, to visible light So, if you can convert the incoming radiation uh, into visible light photons, so it, then it will improve the quality of the image. Okay. So, that is exactly what is done when you use this fluorescent salt screen. So, they are made up a material which can absorb x-rays and emit light. So, uh, materials like uh, calcium tungstate and this uh, rare earth halides for example, lanthanum oxybromide, these kind of materials uh, show this uh, fluorescent property that when you expose them to x-ray radiation they will emit uh, visible light. Okay. So, they are uh, again made into a thin screen kind of thing, a uh, thin uh, 
uh, sheet of screen uh, which can be uh, kept on top of the film. So, in order to make that film what is done is uh, this is coated on uh, some kind of binding film. So, these uh, phosphor particles are phosphor particles which is made of uh, this kind of materials. They are in a binding matrix. which is uh, mounted on a white uh, reflecting base. So, that is how the screen is made. You coat these materials in a binding matrix and that matrix uh, itself is mounted on a white reflecting base, so that you can uh, easily uh, reflect this light onto the film. And other materials like uh, this gadolinium oxysulfide, which is activated uh, by a rare earth like uh, terbium. So, the film is uh, coated on either side, so that uh, the backscattered electrons which are coming from bottom can also be filtered out. So, the film is uh, sandwiched between the intensifying screen. And this kind of phosphor material is the origin of digital radiography. Okay. So, with this uh, we come to the end of uh, this particular lecture. The rest of the things uh, that we have uh, lined up for this particular technique, we will take it up in uh, next few lectures. So, please do uh, tune in for those and I will see you back again. Thank you.